Hi, welcome back. Hello. Okay, uh, we were looking at modifiers. Yes. In the previous video, we completed the types of modifiers. Yes. The first one was the misplaced, the misplaced modifier. modifier, the second one was dangling modifier, and the third is squinting modifier. Right. We've completed the misplaced modifier. Yes. And in dangling modifier, we've looked at the explanation. We are just looking at the questions. Right, and we understood that in misplaced modifier, the subject is present, but it is placed far away from the modifier. And in dangling modifier, subject is not present. Right, so misplaced modifier, the subject is placed far away. I'm just repeating it once again. Yeah. And in dangling modifier, we realized that the subject is missing. missing. And subject there are two ways of correcting it. This, mm, uh, miss, uh, dangling modifier. Yeah. One is to place the subject in the independent clause, and right. second is to place the subject in the dangling phrase. Absolutely. Right. So, can we can we just go ahead with the questions of dangling modifier? Sure. Let's do some examples. Sure. Okay. So let's see the examples. Sure. Yes. So it says. Playing solitaire on the computer for three hours, Michael's paper was not completed. What's the modifier so here? So playing solitaire on the computer for three hours is the is the modifier. And do you remember what type of modifier is this? Yes, that ing. Very ing. good. This is an word. ing word group modifier. Yeah. And because of the uh, because of the comma that was here, mm -hmm. we were able to identify that this is that there could be this could be a modifying error. Very good. And playing solitaire, we identified it's a type ing error. Yeah. And once we've done that, we also realize that Michael's paper is being modified, yes, so which is not correct. Which is an illogical subject. Which is an illogical subject. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you can also ask yourself, uh, who? Absolutely. Playing solitaire on the computer, who? And it say the answer is Michael's paper, which is an illogical subject. So by comma and then by asking who. Yes. Because you realize that, yeah, so mm -hmm. it says Michael's paper, which is wrong. It is actually Michael. Right. So how might we correct the sentence? So we can say playing solitaire on the computer for three hours, Michael mm -hmm. could not complete, complete his, his paper. paper. Right. Or Michael did not complete, complete his, his paper. paper. Yes. Then okay. the second sentence. The second one. To work as a loan officer, comma, an education in financial planning is required. Right. We, we do a lot of these errors because yes. I think it's in, in spoken English you tend to speak like this. Right. But again, the comma is there. To work as a loan officer. Then you uh, ask yourself who? Who, yes. Who has to work as a loan officer? Absolutely. It cannot be the edu education, education in financial planning. planning. Somebody has to work as a loan that officer. That is right. right. So you can say one need, needs a financial education in financial planning or a name or anything but that is so a Something like to work as a loan officer, one should have an education in financial planning. Yes. Or education. to work as a loan officer, one so needs education in financial planning. Anything. You, can, you have five yeah. answer choices and any of the four answer choices that give you the answer is your answer. Understood. So, so the the subject is missing right. the subject is missing and let's say we put in one year and so it, it and it gives you that clarity to, to work as a loan officer one needs education financial planning right generally yeah. students uh, what they uh, say here or what they get confused with is that we do not have that information like if uh, uh, the answer to I say is to work as a loan officer John needs an education in financial planning yeah so they say they say we don't know whether it is John or not but you don't have to go there here yeah. in sentence correction what you have to remember is that subject is missing and subject can be anywhere yeah so what they do is that that they, they look they, it from a critical reasoning that until and think that okay Okay, this was a this is a new information, new information. So we do not know this. That's yeah, right. but but in in a sentence creation, you're just trying to correct the sentence. Right, and subject is very important. So sentence. if you put a John here also, it can also be fine. Fine, that's right. Perfect. So I've understood this. So you understood misplaced modifier and dangling. Yes, modifier. misplaced modifier is absolutely uh, understood, yeah. and, and and so is the dangling modifier. Right. So after that is the squinting modifier. Let's let's go to the squinting modifier. Yes. Okay. Okay, so squinting modifier is also called two-way looking modifier. Okay. Because uh, the uh, modifier is placed between two words, so that it could understood to modify either word. Okay. For example, it says students who miss classes frequently fail the course. Students who miss classes frequently fail the course. In this sentence, the modifier is frequently. If you can underline that word. Frequently, yes. Frequently right. is the modifier. Right. So now what uh, uh, the confusion here is that students who miss classes frequently put a comma after frequently. Yeah. Right. So this this makes 
students who miss classes frequently they fail the course they fail the course okay or we can make it this way students who miss classes put a comma after classes yeah so we can make it this way that students who miss classes they frequently fail the course yes so frequently can uh, modify classes and frequently can also modify understood, fail understood so this is a squinting modify that is it is two way looking modify it uh, makes an illogical sentence it is not clear right so whether the whether frequently modifies classes or frequently modifies fail i i would like you to repeat this once again okay sure we'll do that so in this sentence what you identify as a modifier is frequently yes so if we take uh, the clause as students who miss classes frequently so you're saying one clause we take as students who miss classes frequently and right. we put a comma there right so that means fre uh, uh, frequently modifies classes absolutely so those students who frequently miss classes fail they the fail the course yes that is one part in second part we can take a clause as students who miss class classes yes still here yes yeah so in this case we we'll, uh, we can make out that students who miss classes frequently fail the course that is yes. they frequently fail the course okay so let me just write it down once again so is it that students who miss classes frequently they fail the course students who miss classes frequently miss classes frequently they fail the course one is they fail the course right. something like they fail the course or is it students who miss classes they frequently fail the course and students who miss classes comma yeah, they, they frequently, frequently fail the course right so now if you have to correct this okay. sentence you have to rephrase the sentence absolutely so you either say students who frequently miss classes Mm -hmm. fail the course right. so in that case frequently will only modify classes right or you can say students who miss classes fail the course frequently right so in that case frequently will modify only the or second part only the second part right there is one more sentence here mm -hmm. uh, that is i told my son yeah so we're looking at this one second one i told my son when the game was over i would play with him right so i when the game was over is when, a modifier when the game was over is a modifier so now the confusion i told my son when the game was over i would play with him so did you tell your son when the game was over yes. or did you tell him that i would I, play? i will play when the game is over yes. yeah so there are two, two two things that are possible here yeah right so how might we correct the sentence now When the, when the game, game was, was over, over I, I told, told my son, son I would play with him or, or I told my son I would play with him after when the, the game, when was, the game was over right yeah. so this is how we correct the squinting modifier and yeah. do you understand what is a squinting modifier I understand what is a squinting modifier so do you modifier. understand how to correct it yes right so this is this is what you have to keep in mind when you do a sentence correction so question basically i quickly repeat this a squinting modifier is a modifier which might just point to two directions that's right and and can give you two answers right so for example when we're looking at uh, option number 2 Mm -hmm. I told my son when the game was over I would play with him. Right. So if I put I told my son comma when the game was over I would play with him would mean that I told my son that I will play the game once the game is over. That, that's that's one. That's right. And second is when the game is over I told, I my, told son. my son. Right. So when did you tell him? So, so there, that means there is an ambiguity in the sentence. Ambiguity, yes. And for sentence correction questions you have to make a sentence clear. Absolutely. So that is why squinting modifier is an error. Absolutely understood this one. Understood? Yeah. So let's take the rules then. There are basic two rules for the modifiers. So should we should we go to the next slide? Yes. Okay. Rule one. A modifier should be located as close as possible to what it modifies. Absolutely. We say as close as possible. We should be as close as possible to what it modifies. Right. For example, following are some useful tips for protecting your home from the police. So there is a confusion in the sentence. There is an ambiguity, yeah. and it is not clear why. Because it says following are some useful tips for, for protecting, protecting your home. home. Then from your police. So it makes: yeah. Are we protecting our home from the police? Yes. Are are the tips from the police? Yes. So the answer, the uh, correct sentence is: Following us up, some mm -hmm. tips from the police for protecting your home. Yes. Understood. Because okay. it says following us some useful tips for protecting your home from the police. Yeah. Yes. So protecting your home from the police is wrong. Yes. Let's go to the next slide. This should be wrong. Absolutely. This now the rule two. Yeah. Rule two. When a phrase begins a sentence, make sure that it modifies the subject of the sentence. Yes. Right. Uh, read the sentence. So it says coming from the mall. 
comma a few houses with Christmas lights caught my eyes. Right. So what the few houses coming from the mall? No? Very good. So if the easiest way to understand this is ask yourself who again. Yeah. So coming from the mall, who? It says a few houses. So few houses were not coming from the mall. Absolutely. Who was coming from the mall? I was coming. Right. So you have to write that coming from the mall. I, I saw, saw a few Christmas lights. Yes. Any any option that is given so to maybe you. Maybe I saw a few houses Christmas lights. Maybe it's also written if you. Just enter it in the next line. Yeah. It is written there. Maybe something like this. Coming from the mall, I saw Christmas lights on few houses. Perfect, perfect. You can also not write here, coming from the mall, my eyes. No. Because eyes cannot come alone. Yeah. Right? So it has so to be it has yes, to be I. It has to be a logical subject and Absolutely. the log logical subject is only I. Absolutely. Right? So with this we threw with um, uh, misplaced modifier. Dangling modifier and squinting modifier. Okay, so we've, we've completed with this, we've completed uh, all, all kinds yes. of misplaced. We've completed the dangling and we've also completed the squinting. I hope you now understand all three types of errors and you know how to recognize them and how to correct them. Yes, I completely understand them and I wouldn't be able to recognize them. And in next video, we will do few questions. On, on modifiers? On modifiers. Okay. On mis uh, these uh, modifier errors. Okay, so, so the, so the we'll next, next part of the series would contain questions. From we'll questions. do few questions and at the end of the series we will do the questions that have the errors. But here we'll do few questions uh, which contain modifier errors. Perfect, so, so we start with this video, yeah? Right. And we come back to it. Sure. Thank you.